Hello. Hello, late afternoon, folks. Hopefully you have your coffee. We're about to continue on. I know, I know, I know. You worked all day. You want to come home, sit on the couch, watch TV. I know, I know, I know. It's okay. If she lets you. If she lets you. If you allow yourself to, to, to do that, you're more than welcome to be a couch potato. Lord knows. It's good for the economy. Couch potatoes are always good for the economy. So, munch away. Munch away. A dementia. I'm sorry, dimensions. Not dementia. Demen dimensions. Hold on a second. It's uh, 5 o'clock somewhere. Okay, so, that being said, let's put that on ignore for now, even though um, it's probably very important. But for who it's important is the uh, question. So we're in um, we're in the dimensions, right? Uh, you have to think in dimension. How else are you going to convey this information? Granted, a picture is worth a thousand words, but when it comes to manufacturing and fabrication and all those things, uh, you're going to have to put um, hammer to nail. Okay, so before I get off on my opinion, I'm going to try to to keep this as focused as I can because I'm very eager to get into the MEP aspect of this. Now, dimensions are used to convey the distance or angle between elements or parts of elements. In, in Revit, a dimension is a bidirectional annotation, which means you can edit the distance. Which means you can edit the distance directly within the dimension string to move elements a specific distance apart, and the dimension updates automatically as the distance between elements changes. Dimensions are annotations, making them view-specific elements that appear only in a view in which they're drawn. The dimension tools are located on the annotation tab. <laughs> the dimension tools are very, very, very powerful. Like all annotations in Revit, Dimensions will automatically adjust to the scale of the view. If you change the view scale, the dimensions automatically resize. Remember your scale factors. By default, a linear dimension string can only be created between parallel entities. Non-parallel entities, by their very nature, have a dynamic dimensional relationship. Dimensions in Revit architecture always read from bottom or from right the... Uh, I'm sorry, let me read that again. Dimensions in Revit architecture always read from the bottom or from the right, following standard architectural sheet layout conventions. To place a dimension, choose any dimension tool and begin selecting multiple entities. We're not going to talk about conventions, because it would be nice to spend my days going to, uh, to, to Jacob Javits. <laughs> I don't have that luxury. That's how they all go out. <laughs> These mid-level senior managers. That's, how, that's the route they all take. So you, you know where they're going to be. You know where they, all these folks go. They go, they go to the, uh, they take the, uh, the handouts from the manufacturers and get the hotels over at uh, Jacob Javits and, and, and walk around and, and get indoctrinated by by the firms. So again, we're well beyond that. They, they didn't know, right? They didn't know we knew all this. And now they do, and now they know. There's three. I bet you didn't know. There's a lot that's new, and some didn't know. Anyway, that's what you get for basing your perspectives on conjecture. So when any dimension tool uh, is active, you will see two settings available in the options bar. They're specifically related to walls. Now, yeah, yeah, there's definitely a wall between us. There's definitely a wall. It could be the Berlin Wall. It could be the Berlin Wall. Right? It could be. Lots of walls. And Trump, Trump build the one right now. Right? Lots of walls. So I'm just going to get out of this, uh, this particular view. And uh, I'll just read this following passage to you. Being that we're following standard architectural sheet layout conventions, 
That's four. Like uh, or don't, uh, I could care less. To place a dimension, choose any dimension tool and begin selecting multiple entities. You can keep selecting multiple entities in any sequence. Creating a dimension string across your view. Click anywhere in an open area of the view to finish selecting entities and place the dimension string. Well, I would like to do it like this. Click any one, any entity, any one. One thing, and I've noticed this before, you can use this two types of, uh, of annotating uh, dimension strings here, or there's multiple types, but you see here aligned and linear? There's a, there's a huge difference between the two. There's a huge difference between the two. Linear dimension places horizontal or vertical dimensions that measure the distance between reference points. The dimensions are aligned with the horizontal or vertical axis of the view. But now aligned places dimension between parallel references or between multiple points. As you move the cursor over the drawing area, the reference points that you can use for dimensions are highlighted. Press tab to cycle through different reference points for elements that are close to one another. Right? Reference points. Linear, if you notice on linear, when I hover around all of these items, you can see there are reference points around this chair that I can dimension, right? Again, we wouldn't dimension this chair in this view, obviously, but from a manufacturer's standpoint, we, we may, right? We may. From a manufacturer's standpoint, but not in the context, or at least not within a view like this. And the only reason I point that out is because we were trying to, to try to emulate this dimension string here that was that's running uh, parallel to this wall, this 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 wall string, if you, for lack of a better term. Uh, you'll see that there are only certain points that we can actually pick along the wall, right? And if you notice happens to be where there's a, a join, right? Where there's a join, where the walls join. Now that is not the proper dimension tool for this particular application. This would be more along the lines of what we're looking to accomplish with this, where we could choose to place the dimensions uh, along the wall based on predefined um, criteria. Now, I'm not going to get into this just yet because the book doesn't get into it just yet. So I'm just going to do some things really fast. You can follow them if you want. But now, if I was to do something like that, or do something like this, you would see a different, uh, a different effect, right? So just bear with me as I uh, go through this because you get a better understanding of what's going on here. Now that's wall center line, right? wall face. Okay, but I don't want to go much further than that because I don't want to confuse either of us. <laughs> okay, so now it's relatively intuitive, but again, um, as you're going through um, the the the, uh, the the project, um, and if you're under the gun and you haven't had an opportunity, or if it was denied you, you may um, unfortunately um, not be able to conform as fast as you need to conform. So that's why we take our time. Again, if if you go back to the first video, this is more about nonchalance. And 
style and articulation, ambiance and ethics and morals and all of those things that play into architecture and history and philosophy and theology and art and leisure. Things that, unfortunately in life, sometimes you don't stop to appreciate. And I'll be damned, you know, I'll be damned, but I'll be damned if, if I, I, I'm not allowed uh, that luxury. And I won't deny it from myself. Uh, I won't deny it from myself. At a bare minimum, I will stop and smell the roses. And only because I've seen beautiful architecture. I've seen, I've been in, I've been around the block. And if you want, go ahead, go look at my uh, Facebook pictures. All sorts of things there. All sorts of abstract art and real life scenarios, real world projects. Where I've been, I'll meet you. Where you've been? All right, so you've been over there, I've been over here. Now, um, I'm sorry, that little beep you hear is just the, um, it's to remind myself that this video is going long. And I wouldn't want to uh, burden you with all of my diatribes of my past history. So, yeah, when the, when the dimension tool is active, you'll see two settings available in the options bar that are specifically related to walls. The first drop down list allows you to specify the default method for dimensioning wall geometry. You can choose from wall center lines, wall faces, center of core, or faces of core. The setting really just establishes the defaults, what will be selected when you first click a wall with the dimension tool. If you need to select a different part of a wall, hover the mouse cursor over a wall segment, and then press the tab key to cycle through the available options. Each part of the wall segment, segment geometry will at the mouse pointer as you continue to repeatedly press the tab key. So if we go to this wall, so if we go to annotate again, and it says wall faces, but I'm going to go to aligned dimension and come over to this wall. And let's take a look at this wall for a second. And it's going to hover over the outs of the exterior face and hit tab. Well, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And let's see if we get a little closer. Go to the center of it. Tab around, you can get either side any uh, um, any particular element that's delineated or denoted in that wall. Now I just want to make sure that this is on. Yeah, it's a little better. Let's try that. Let's take a look. Okay, let's get in really close. So I hit tab. You can see. What you hover over, you can dimension this wall from any location. Again, sometimes these walls, uh, remember that just uh, the cut hierarchy sequences that we had within the uh, air wall assembly dialog box, right? The cut hierarchy sequence, right, right, right? As they join or don't join or wrap or don't wrap, how deep into the wall core uh, these walls join is important. If you're, if you're cutting dimensional lumber, it doesn't all uh, meet up and miter at the corner. In some cases, it's a butt splice, right? In some cases, like me, I'm stuck in this chair. I'm surprised I'm not getting hemorrhoids. Like half the other clowns get, sitting on a bar stool, <laughs> they all get hemorrhoids at the end of the day anyway, right? All right, so you gotta go and walk around and smell the roses. You gotta get out in the field. You gotta really um, take a peek at all this stuff. All right, so that be let's just hold our uh, hold our thoughts um, and, and and practice that um, practice it because practice makes perfect. And each part of the wall segment geometry will highlight at the mouse. Okay, now the second option allows you to pick either individual references, default, which is the default, or entire walls. When the entire walls option is selected. Click the Options button to modify the order dimension settings, which they show a figure of. When the uh, entire walls option is selected, you'll see that button's grayed out right now because it's on individual references. So we're still in the annotate uh, command, and we can say, okay, well, you know what? Let's pick entire walls. But well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Let's pick the uh, individual references, and then let's just say we want it to go. From, from here 
to all the way down to the face of this wall. And click again. Well, there we go. We've got 32 foot, 8 and 3 quarters of an inch. Now, if we were to then do the same command by right mouse clicking, repeat align dimension. That's a new trick I didn't teach you. Almost like hitting enter in AutoCAD to repeat the prior command. And then select this pick reference to in entire walls. Now, when we come around over here and we select this wall, it won't give us the option yet of picking um, the individual elements that make up the layers of this wall. But within the context of performing the aligned dimensioning command, we'll be able to, uh, to in, in, in the context of that, we'll be able to click the options button to modify the order dimension settings. Now, in this example, we have chosen to dimension opening widths as well as intersecting walls. The dimension string shown was placed with a single click on the exterior wall. Well, I have to demonstrate that to you. But the dialog box is set up that way. It is set up so that um, it will dimension um, the openings from their center and it will dimension the intersecting walls from their uh, center, I believe. So let's just uh, dig deeper into this dialog box and do exactly what it says. So now let's go back over here. Tire walls. Now I just picked the wall. That's it. I didn't do anything else. I didn't drag, drop, click. All I did was just click the entire wall and look what I got. I got your pink slip. That's what I got. Waiting for you. The one that isn't paying attention. I'm just sitting here waiting to write. Where's my pen? Where's my, where's my pen? Uh, who, who's next? I'm being facetious. Let's not get overzealous. What did I say, right? What did I say? But again, the more you can harness the power of this, the more capable you'll be able to yield that power. And therein can lie a psychosis. Careful. The absolute power corrupts absolutely, wholeheartedly. Thing worse than authority is, the only thing worse than authority is the lack of it. Anyway, my boss can call any minute now. And I'll start to sweat. And I'll start to get nervous. Because, you know, again, I'm doing this on my own dime. And I'm not getting paid a penny for it. I'm doing this out of the goodness of my own heart to better myself and others if I can. That's my uh, modus operandi. And ensure that I enamor myself against risk in the future marketplace. Not the current marketplace. That's a bloodbath. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried of the futures. I mean, I mean, I mean, soybean futures. Okay, so now that's a very powerful tool. So let's undo it. Let's not do. It. Let's not do it that way. Let's do it a different way. Let's uh, pick the entire world. But let's change the optioning now. And let's um, actually, you know what? Let's let's let's. I change my mind. I'm so indecisive. I'm almost like that. That that that. What's the word I'm looking for? That future divorcee doesn't know whether or not she wants to stay married and she keeps that boyfriend on the side in case of emergency, break glass, that type of scenario. I'm indecisive. I'm becoming just like some of the females I've met over the course of my life. You know the type. Guys like that too. Some guys, I guess. Uh, indecisive. Well, I want to stay married, but I want to keep this guy on the hook because I, I'm not, I have a void in my marriage. I have a void in my marriage. So I'm going to have to play two sides of the fence. So this, this tool may be able to help you and now we're against that too. I'm sorry, I told you. I'm going to sprinkle some theology into this and some philosophy just for, for ha -ha's, right? Because of all that stuff that married folks go through when they go through divorce, it's funny. It really doesn't hurt, right? It doesn't really hurt your feelings. It's just funny games. All right, so get over it. Here we go. So now, in this instance, on this wall, I'm going to do something different, but I need, I need a door. Uh, I, maybe I can do it over, uh, I'll do it over on this wall. Let me come over here, go to architecture. Let me just put in a, a door. And I'm not going to get crazy with it. I'm just going to, and your sister, I put in a, I put in a wall. I'm going to put in a door, glasses. I'm just going to put in, I'll put in two doors. Just for ha -has. Hold that thought. And I'm going to go back to the annotate, and go back to a line dimension, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm, I'm going to keep entire walls, except we're 
options, and then we're going to compare and contrast the two dimension styles. And over here, I'm going to just change the first radio button to openings, but widths. And then we're going to take a look here, and we're going to make an assumption that this dimension line is going to move over to here, this dimension line is going to move over to here, and there's going to be another dimension added between the two. And I'm going to then click this, and indeed, that's the case, right? And if I was to maybe change that option right now, and see within the context of doing that, it doesn't change the dimension line. It, it's just going to do that on the next, um, next time you do it. So if you do click the dimension, label, equality, display, edit type, there's really a problem. There's, there's going to be a way in here within the parameters of the dimension, and there are a lot of them, as you can see. There are a few parameters within the dimension string that you can manipulate as well. So that being said, let's not get into that just yet. But no, this is a very powerful tool. So again, I'll go back and do it the other way. Or look, no, I'm not. Just look at it. That's the other way. From the center line, wall center line, or opening center line, right? Opening center line. If we take a peek, openings from the center. O openings, well, let me move the dialog box over right, right above my big fat head. Openings from the center line would be this case. Opening from the, the widths would be this case. Intersecting walls, right, would be, if, let's take a look here, intersecting walls. It, it, it says that if the checkbox is on, it'll dimension the intersecting wall. Um, it doesn't say that it's going to dimension it from the center line of the intersecting wall. It just says that it's going to dimension the intersecting walls where it wraps, okay, or if, where it meets. And that we, that's a good test. If we were to dimension this with a wall going this way, which we're going to do right now, we're going to test this radio button. We're going to take a wall, architects, wall. We're going to put a wall right here, just like that. And I'm just going to do the dimension again, annotate, aligned, entire walls, option. Now, I'm going to keep this on intersecting walls, and I'm just going to do a few things here as we experiment. I'm going to select the wall, and sure enough, it's intuitive, intuitive enough to know that there's an intersecting wall touching this wall. And a dimension between, if it, I know it's tough to see it at this scale, but if I select it and took this little puppy right here, dragged it out, you can see that this five inches is a basic wall five inch generic. Okay, get your box, pack up your stuff from your desk, because you're going down the road. Today's your last day at the office. Just letting you know. You're getting your check soon. You just don't know it yet. Okay. So, I'm sorry. I don't have an axe to grind. Do I, do I have an axe to grind? Do I have an axe to grind? All right. That being said, now let's undo that. Let's undo that and test the, the next parameter. We're going to go to options again. And now we're going to say, not centers, we're going to say widths, right? I'll do the same exact thing. Now, hold on. Leave it centers, turn off intersecting walls. Hold on. And we're going to select this again. And now we got from the wall face, wall faces, right? Wall faces without inclusive of the intersecting walls. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Intersecting grids. Now, let's just make a look here. It does see it doesn't go that granular into it. It doesn't go that granular into it. And, and I'd like to. Uh, however, I would have to create a grid for that. And this video is going long. So you know me. I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I like you. I'm going to create an intersecting grid as fast as I can. As fast as I can. I'll do it. I'll do it as fast as I can. Please, don't lay me off. Don't lay me off. <laughs> Digital twin, left mic, right mic, don't lay me off. Don't lay me off, please. Left mic, right mic, don't lay me off. So hold on, bear with me. There's a method to my madness, I told you. There's a method to my madness. Ah, don't lay me off. I know it's 4.30, the client wants the, the drawings. Hold on, intersecting grid. Now, let's go back over here. Let's delete this dimension. Now, let's go back over to Annotate. Let's go to Aligned. Let's go to Options. And let's now um, not select intersecting walls, but select 
interesting grids for a second, and let's just pick the wall. And what do you know? As the note says, it's intuitive. You probably could figure that out without even doing it, but you get the idea, right? So if I was to undo that, and if I was to do something like, say, this, hit this, and hit delete, and then do this, and hit keb. Nope, I can't get, oh, what I want to do is get the whole string of walls around the whole thing. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And I didn't get the last wall. Notice how I didn't get the last wall because of the fact that look where the look where the wall actually intersects it's miter cut right there, right it's miter cut so it's not going to give you a dimension that's not true right it's not going to give you a dimension that's not true now intersecting walls was turned off right intersecting walls was turned off note that let's undo that again let's go back to uh, dimension aligned options intersecting walls and intersecting grids and hit OK. Let's do the exact same thing we just did. That wall, that wall, that wall, and that wall. And we still, it didn't get that wall, but it will get the grid. Okay. Now, because this wall is on a 30, I believe it's a 30, if I had to double check it, it's a 30. No, it's a 20. No, it's a 70. It's counterclockwise. It could well be that's the case. Now, again, that's probably, that's, well, that's not to mention the string of dimensions. But again, um, there are AIA graphic standards that, that, that direct you to dimension floor plans uh, in a standard industry practice. And, and you're going to have to you flip through a whole bunch of drawings. To, uh, to get that down. Now, or the architect's just going to throw a blow over your drawings. Now, um, if you're the lead architect, well, that's your responsibility. If you're a project architect, technical architect, if you're a draftsman, CAD operator, BIM technician, whatever role you play within your firm, uh, you're going to need to know these things. So, um, again, and I'm not necessarily, uh, I was just thinking, ABBA, I want to listen to some music. All right, all right, Mike, slow down. Uh, slow down, slow down. I think that um, I'm going to stop this there. There's so much more. This is going to take a few videos to get through. But um, let's do that so that I don't rush and then anyone searching for a quick solution uh, doesn't have to sit through this entire uh, comedic episode. But I really do. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I don't need to see my name in lights. And let's co-sign Tiny. And hopefully this is uh, this video is a benefit a benefit to you tangentially, because um, again, I, I'd like it to be. But again, on the same note, I would like it to be beneficial to me as well, to some extent, at some point in my life. So um, I'll leave you on that note. <laughs>